online family it's so great to be back here with you can I get an amen great so you know the routine if you're watching the service please start your watch party and click that share button so other people can be blessed with this week's service and don't forget go on YouTube and subscribe to our channel so that you can watch all our services well, family, you know that today is a beautiful communion Sunday morning. So let's just focus our attention on the cross and get ready with our holy emblems as we're going to be blessed with a beautiful holy communion service. The word of the Lord says, give and it shall come back to you in good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. So let's give in overflow so that we can receive in overflow. Our banking details at the bottom of the screen. I know you're anxious, so let's get ready for a phenomenal word that's going to change your heart and mind. And on that note, let's welcome the man of the house, Dr. Alan Joseph. Amen. Let's worship God together. Hallelujah. God is able to enter that atmosphere that you are right now, to enter wherever you are. All we're going to do is just begin to lift up our hands, just begin to raise our hands, and just begin to declare that God is God all by Himself. Every atmosphere is able to change when we begin to raise our hands, when we begin to get on our knees. So let's just begin to worship God together. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.
The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here The atmosphere is changing now Before the Spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love Your love surrounds us You're the reason we to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. The atmosphere is changing now. Sing here in this place for the spirit of the love. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Oh, that's a 
Because the word of the Lord says that his kingdom shall come and his will will be done here as it is in heaven right now. So wherever you are right now, just begin to throw up your hands to the heavens and say, Lord, we believe that your will is able to be done over my life, over my family's life, over my marriage, over my kids. Just begin to say, Lord, we trust in your word, Lord. And we believe that a miracle can happen. Amen. Greetings in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus. Oh, what a joy it is that I made it from the bottom of my heart to be able to share with you God's word and more especially to come into your home. I pray that you'll be blessed as you watch us online and everyone else is invited. I pray that this word will truly touch you. As you might realize, I'm coming to the end of my series, maybe with all the parables. And there's another parable about the lost sheep. That word is not just for people, but it's especially for pastors. That you'll care for the people, you'll go out for the odd one. And so I pray that this final parable that I'm about to share with you is going to be a blessing to every one of us. I trust you are ready to get blessed. Amen. Of course, I'm going to title this message, The Pearl of Great Price. The Pearl of Great Price. Well, later on, you'll be able to discover what this means. It will show up on the program, the pearls. But let's continue. The kingdom of God could be described as follows. The question I'm asking is, what is the kingdom of God? My first point, what is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God could be described as following. A society where God rules, a place where diseases are cured or healed, a place where evil spirits are cast out, Oh, somebody say amen already. A place where demons are overcome. A place where people find a home, a shelter in difficult times. And that is really for you and I, the church. That is their shelter, that is their hiding place. And therefore the church needs to stay open to meet the needs of God's people. Amen. Praise God. How can you and I achieve the above? How can we achieve the above? In other words, finding the pearl of great price. Well, the second point is by becoming a witness for Jesus. Becoming a witness for Jesus. And it's beautifully explained in the next parable. And this parable is called the wedding feast. The wedding feast. And it's so powerful. And as it breaks down, I pray there'll be a deep conviction in your spirit as well as mine. I'm not only really preaching to you, but I'm preaching to myself. We all need to be encouraged, inspired, motivated in the times that we are living in. Amen. In the book of Matthew chapter 22 from verses 1 to 14 is this parable of the wedding feast. It is a parable about the universe. Now, Jesus was teaching that the kingdom of God is open not to a few, but to everyone, not only to Jews. Now, if we quickly go back to that parable in Matthew 22, listen to a few verses. It says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding and they were not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatted calf have been killed and all are ready, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and went their own ways. One of them to their own farm, another to their business. And the rest seized the servants, treated them unfairly and killed some of them. Wow. But when the king heard about it, he was furious and he sent out his armies, destroyed those murderers and burn up their cities. Then he said to the servant, the wedding is ready, but those who were not invited are not worthy. Therefore go into the highways and as many as you find, invite them to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all that could be found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came to see the guests, he saw a man who had not 
dressed in his wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into the utter darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of, feet, of teeth. Verse 14, for many are called, but few are chosen. Somebody else said, many are called, but few are frozen. I pray we're not the frozen ones, but we are the called ones. Now listen to the meaning or the interpretation of this parable. This parable that we are using is the familiar setting of a wedding setup, okay? So this master invites everybody to come to the wedding of his son. And so as you heard me read, he says, all those invited guests give out the invitations and we expect them to come. He waited and nobody, re and nobody came. And so the king was quite upset and then he said to his servants, go out into the highways and the byways, invite the good and the bad people, let them all come. And when the king came back and looked, he saw the hall that was filled. But now this was very interesting to me, and I guess it's also going to touch you. He said that some of the guests went their own way and listened to what they did. It said they ignored the invitation, went back to do their own thing, their businesses, their homes, whatever it is. This is going to be a great problem when we stand before the Lord one day. What he's called us to do, we ignore him, we don't obey him, we disregard his commandments. We are going to be in trouble. The word of the Lord is warning us today. Amen. Some guests ignored the servant, servants of the Lord and went about doing their own thing. Others seized the slaves, mistreated them, and even killed some of them. The king was furious, sent his troops to destroy the murderers and burn their cities, then instructed the servants to go out and invite anyone and everyone, both good and evil. So then the original guest that were invited were Jews. So they thought, well, we Jews, we God's chosen people, it's fine. Nobody is fine. When God invites you, you must come, you must honor the word of the Lord. So the Jews ignored the servants thinking, well, they are it. But listen to me carefully. The Jews who, who reacted violently could be a reference to those who mistreated people, mistreated the prophets, mistreated the gospel, and even rejected the name of Jesus. You and I know that the rejection of Jesus Christ is the greatest sin that will send us to a lost eternity. So the guests who were invited afterwards, listen to me, are you and I, who are referred to in the Bible as Gentiles. That's right, referred as Gentiles. Now here's another important point that I must make. At the end of the parable, we see an interaction between the king and a man who was not dressed appropriately. Now what does this mean? So the king approached him and said, how come you are here? How did you get here? Because you're not dressed properly. And so he was taken, bound, hand and feet and thrown into the furnace. Listen to me very carefully. It sends thrills down my spine to think that this means that when God had instructed us when he had called us to do what he had commanded us to do in his word for example in Mark 16 says go into all the world and preach my gospel when we ignore the calls coming from the pulpit from your pastors from your leaders and you just say I'm too busy with my work with my business I'm doing my own thing and so the Bible tells us, listen to the meaning of this, the unsuitably dressed man represents those who are not prepared for complete commitment to Jesus. I think you've heard that old saying, people have one foot in the world and the other in the church. This is the problem. People are not fully, not all, but they are many, committed to the voice, to the word of the Lord. There is a great need in the kingdom of God, in your local church, in the ministry. And we always, it seems that's a pattern generally in every church. 
And I try to make it better in our church over the years because I've noticed when there is an invitation to a prayer meeting and to Bible school, that's the poorest crowd we get. But God is changing it for us in a big way. Why? Because people are not fully committed. If you can't pray, you can't stay. If you can't pray with your leader, you cannot work with your leader. It is a basic principle that we totally ignore. And so often we look for the leaders, for the workers, cell leaders, whoever you might have positioned or called in your ministry. You find that just the few that will come. That's why Jesus said, many are called, but few are chosen. We're going to be surprised on that day, church, ladies and gentlemen, who we will see in heaven. So, the parable concludes with these words. I said it already. Many are called or invited, but few are chosen. You and I do not understand the ways of God. We don't know the plans of God. Therefore, Isaiah says well, our ways must become like God's ways so that we can understand his ways. But so, so there's going to be a lot of surprise for a lot of us. And I know and we always pray and say that, well, I'm like the thief on the cross. The last minute I can ask Jesus, forgive me. Well, if you get that opportunity, that's good for you. But look at it this way. Suppose you've been in a motor car crash or you or crashed in a plane or something and you are barely living, you're full of aches and pains, do you think you're going to remember saying the sinner's prayer? I'm not here to judge you, but that's a hard call to make. So why wait until that time? Why don't you make that decision when you are in a good place? Many people call me when they are dying in the hospital bed. All along, they wouldn't come to church. Maybe half of their family comes, one of the spouses come, the other won't come. But when they're on their dying bed, when the doctor gives them a bad report, they say, call the pastor, call the pastor. And sometimes it works that we get there. They say the sinner's prayer, but other times they're in a coma and we're not sure. As doctors do say that people can listen to you in a coma, but they can't respond. And therefore, sometimes you see movements of their fingers or their eyelids. And so we try to say our best, but obviously they can't repeat it. So why wait for such a difficult time when you have the opportunity like now to give your life to Jesus? Hallelujah. Well, I want to come to the title of this message. Another parable, the pearl of great price that is found in the book of Matthew 246. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Wow. Now let me give you the meaning, the revelation of what this really means. I trust it blessed me like it's going to bless you. We were in Cape Town, what's it, a year ago or so, and we went to this place where we bought fish and chips like everybody likes to do. And there was a section where they were selling pearls. And they gave you the opportunity even to break one open, and you can choose the best one. If you didn't like it, leave it aside, get one. And they're very expensive. They go to different prices. And, of course, it'll come on the screen. But let's go back. Noticed that the merchant stopped seeking pearls when he found the pearl of great price. It's like, for example, when I was opening and cutting those pearls and the, and the lady said, you don't have to take every one you, you open, but look for the one you love. Look for the one and she would help and say, that's better, that's more expensive, that's less marked or scarred, and it's shocking. But the greatest pearl is what? Eternal life. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says the merchant stopped looking for any more pearls because he found the precious pearl of great price. Think of the price that Jesus paid for your sins and for mine. He was sinless, but he took our sins upon him. Amen. That's what the Bible says. Read Isaiah 53. The whole chapter explains it so beautifully. He was sent like a sheep to the slaughter. He had no sin in him, but he died for your sins and for my sins. And what's the greatest joy of Christianity? The greatest miracle of Christianity? 
You're hearing a lot of stories about different people condemning and speaking Christianity won't last, so on and so forth. But listen to me. The only reason that Christianity will never die off is because the one who shed his blood on the cross is alive. Go to every other grave of every other great teacher and prophet. They're dead. But go to the grave of Jesus. I've been to Israel. And oh, I was so excited when the guide took us to the tomb of Jesus and read that scripture when the angel said to the disciples, He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. That's why the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwells in you and me, it will do what? Quicken our mortal bodies. What will it do? Quicken. Shake off the sin, the weak things we call weaknesses. Remove it so that we can become the precious pearl that we seek eternal life who is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior oh yes I'll take an amen right now so the scripture goes on to say that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and for my sins now what does he expect from you and I in return I know I mean like nobody comes and hold a threat against us when we give our hearts to Jesus when we go through the waters of baptism, but when we study the word of God and when we attend church, we begin to realize that there's more than just salvation. There's more than just giving our hearts to Jesus because the Bible now talks about us becoming fruitful. When you read John chapter 15, it's a good chapter for you to read. I won't go into it today, but it talks about fruit bearing. Matthew chapter 7 verses 16 to 23 says, You will know them how? By their fruit. That's right. I always say to people, you're not going to be recognized by anything else, but you're going to be recognized by your fruit. Basically meaning, how many have you led to the Lord? How many that you can say their blood is not on your hands. So, do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. In other words, you got to understand this, that if you're not living for God, you can't be a soul winner. You can't be a testimony. You can't be an example. But when you're living for God, when you know that you know that you are in right standing with the Lord, what would you want to do? You want to share this good news with somebody else that how it transformed your life, my life. We cannot be selfish. We cannot be conceited. We cannot cover up and keep it to ourselves. It is an opportunity that the church affords us to become part of the, of the ministry, become part of outreach and feeding programs, open airs, 10 crusades, whatever else we do for evangelism, door-to-door -door evangelism, track distribution. My word, why? Because you realize and you say, what he's done for me, it is no secret. I want him to do it for everybody else. Now you can understand how, how powerful this is, that as I conclude this series, I'm speaking about being fruitful, being fruitful. So we know that. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. So makes it clear, isn't it? A bad tree can't bring good fruit. So by their fruit. So one day when you and I stand before God, you're going to know that person was fruitful. You're going to know they did what God wanted them to. Listen a little further. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Wow. I guess I'll read the next verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness or evil doing or evil deeds. Now, when I was so sick, with this cancer that I had, the one thing that I brought before God 
more than anything else. I said, Lord, I cannot die. Because they told us beforehand that everybody basically dies. And if those that live, they live for six months, a year, one or two years, and they all die. A doctor told me that all of these patients that had this kind of cancer that I had, which is called multiple myeloma, he says, after I treat them, they live two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, two months, and they all die. And he said to me, where is your book? Uh, get your book out and I'll buy the first 50 copies. He was so excited and thrilled because truly it is a miracle. But the thing that I said to the Lord, Lord, I mean your will and your work for me is not completed. I am a soul winner. I am a fruit bearer. Lord, you cannot take me before my time. And that was the main thing I asked the Lord. And when I got back after doing everything in, 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 in uh, Joburg, a year later, we had a Thanksgiving service, and in me sharing all the all the slides of how I looked when I was sick, when I was dying with my hair off and my voice about gone and looking so bad that even I get shocked when I look at those pictures. And they, and they said there wasn't a dry eye in that meeting. But you know what? I said to the people, there's a message I got for you is, know the will of God, stay in the will of God, and do the will of God, because that's what's going to keep you so that you don't die prematurely. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on. And so there's some powerful verses that I want to leave with you as I'm getting ready to close. 1 John 1 9 says, if we confess our sins, he God, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, all unrighteousness. You know, I don't know, but yes, to a point, it's true. Everybody's not the same. Your life doesn't change or your habits don't leave you all together. But I'm old school. That when you give your heart to Jesus, when you repent of your sins, your sins leave you. The craving leaves you. No more you crave for whatever it was that you were doing. You just totally transform. What, what does that mean? It means this in 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. And behold, everything, everything becomes new. So now that scripture is exactly what I'm implying. When you give your life to Jesus, you're never going to be the same again. You are going to change totally, my friend, just like the next verse that says in John chapter 3, verse 3, Nicodemus was so confused about Jesus' teaching. And Jesus said to him, you must be born again. And he said, how can a man be born again? How can he go back into his mother's womb the second time? So Nicodemus was a teacher, an intelligent man. And he approached Jesus by night secretly. But Jesus said to him plainly, Unless or except a man is born again of the word and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So here's an opportunity for every one of you to turn a new slate, my friend. Yes, this is the good news about the gospel of Jesus Christ. You look at your life and say, I can never change. My life's messed up. I'll never come right. Here's an opportunity where he says he wants to give you a born again experience. Think about a natural birth. Somebody that's born into the world is totally innocent. When you and I have our second born again experience, we have a new life that's in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. All things are passed away and behold, all things become new. Somebody say amen with me right now. So let me conclude with this thought. Everything you and I need is in the kingdom of God. That's right. Because of the great price of that great pearl, which is Christ Jesus, that you found, you received it. Come on, no matter what we're going through, even at this time with this COVID, so many loved ones and friends are are so sick, some are losing their lives. But how many of you know that we can say like Apostle Peter, when he was rebuked by Jesus so severely, do you remember when Jesus said to him, Peter, I prayed for you because Satan wanted to sift you like wheat. Another time he said to him, get thee behind me like you are Satan. But then Peter said, Lord, who else can I turn to? For you alone have the words of eternal life. 
Who am I speaking to today? Somebody needs this word. Somebody needs this eternal life. And Jesus wants to give it to you as messed up as you are. I said everything you need is in the kingdom. Why? Go back to the first scripture that I read to you from Matthew 6, 33. What does it say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all. Somebody say all. And all these things will be added. You know, people get jealous of pastors and Christians because they wonder how we able to live a better life. Not because we're rich, not because we get handouts. It's because the life that we live, God blesses us. And he doesn't only provide our needs, he also gives us our desires. A desire is something you hope for, you wish for. And let me tell you, God gives it to you. I'm standing here today as a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wow, I'm in my late 60s. I have no regrets. I have no regrets of giving my life to Jesus. Yes, the ministry is not easy. It's difficult. There's a price to pay. But when you know that you know that you know that you have been called. I had a vision from God. I know that he's chosen me to do this. And so I am going to do it no matter what happens. As I've said, I've had cancer that I could have died. Here am I. Going four years later, no trace, no sign of it. Every six months I got to do blood tests and so on. And they find nothing every time. I don't know what you're going through. Whether it's this COVID, don't lose hope. Don't let fear hit you. That's what's happening. We're understanding that fear is gripping people because they have difficulty in breathing and so on and so forth. But don't fear. God's given you a spirit of love and a sound mind. I'm getting ready to pray for you right now. And I'm believing God not only to heal you, but to meet every need of yours. Hallelujah. Amen. I trust you are blessed with this word this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' mighty name. Well, now we're going to have our communion service. I trust you have it with you. And I pray that the Lord's going to bless us. As I just read a few verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. From 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Sorry, I'm going to do, forgive me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 16. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Jesus? Amen. And the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Jesus Christ? So I want you to join me right now. Your family, we always say in church, you are responsible to give it to your children because you know if they are at the age of understanding, so it's up to you. But we encourage families, children, but not if you're not right with God. Don't do that because the Bible says, that you'll get sick and you'll never get healed. And some people die because they receive communion when they're not right with God. So I want to bless this communion. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. Like the songwriter says, even if we had a thousand tongues, we'll, it will never be adequate enough to thank you. But Lord, all we can do is lay our lives on the altar as a living sacrifice for the price you paid Jesus. So Lord, today, bless the holy sacraments. Let this vine speak of your blood. And as I preach today, those that will receive you as their Lord and Savior, Almighty God, forgive them for their sins. Come into their lives and change them. That's right. That's right. Right now I'm giving somebody an opportunity. You're saying, Pastor, what must I do? Just ask Jesus to come into your heart, to forgive you for your sins. Get committed into a local church that preaches the full gospel of Jesus Christ and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and believe in the gifts of healing and signs and wonders. If you're in our area, come to our church, call our numbers, and we'll be glad to visit you, counsel you, and so on. So right now, let him come into your life through the blood, the blood, the blood that has never lost its power. And we realize that the bread 
speaks of his body that was bruised for our iniquities and by his stripes we were healed past tense so right now i'm going to pray after this that you're going to receive your healing amen so why don't you join me take your bread together and let's partake Likewise with the grape juice. Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you will touch and heal and deliver your people. Break every sin, every habit, every generational curse. I bind it, I destroy it in the name of Jesus. Be saved, be delivered and be healed even from this virus in the name of Jesus those that are trusting God with me right now and you are sick I rebuke it I curse it be healed in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah receive it receive it Lord we pray for all families who have lost loved ones comfort them strengthen them Lord bring them through what they are going through right now I ask it in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus we bless you. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, our Heavenly Father. We love you, Lord. We worship you. Thank you once again in the sweet and powerful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, what a joy it has been for me to minister to you. I trust you have blessed this series that I've been sharing on the different parables. And wasn't this one powerful? Yes, it was. Time's up. i got to go. Don't forget, until next time, it's... Up to you!